Hi everybody, this is What is the Constitution by Patricia Brennan DeMuth. We're going to look at Lesson 9, Decisions, Decisions, and this is Part 1 where we're going to look at the pictures and headings and other things. I try to get our brains going so we can remember stuff after we're done reading. So if you got your copy of the book handy, uh, you might want it so that you can look a little more closely at the pictures especially. And uh, please make sure that your brain is plugged in and ready to go. All right, on to previewing the chapter. So again, the point is we're trying to prepare our brain for reading. And we're going to be uh, using a number of different study st uh, reading strategies as we go through this chapter. I want to remind you that if there are no questions, we've not been assigned any. If there are questions, you always want to read them first. If there are no questions, uh, one thing you can do is if you change the chapter title, in this case, Decisions, Decisions, into a question, what are all the decisions that need to be made? If you focus on trying to answer that question, you may discover that you remember a lot more than otherwise. Okay, on to the first page of the section. So go ahead and change, in, turn, turn the page to page 57 or look here on the screen and you can see there's not a lot. There's a, just some text and a heading. It says chapter six, decisions, decisions. So what are those decisions? Why are, why are we worried about these decisions, huh? All right, let's turn to the next two pages. 58 and 59. And so on 58, we don't see much to draw our attention, but on 59, we have a couple of illustrations. And thankfully, these have uh, captions to them. And so the first one says Theodore Roosevelt, 42. And in case you didn't know, Theodore Roosevelt, he's also known as Teddy Roosevelt. He was our 26th president. He became president of the United States after William McKinley was shot and killed. He was assassinated. And Roosevelt was McKinley's vice president. So he was promoted to president after McKinley died. A lot of people recognize uh, Theodore Roosevelt, or they recognize his face because his face is on Mount Rushmore in South Dakota. And uh, many historians consider him to be one of our greatest presidents. Uh, next to uh, Theodore Roosevelt is, you can see there, John F. Kennedy. It says John F. Kennedy, 43. Uh, John F. Kennedy was our 35th president of the United States, and he was elected in 1960. And uh, when he was president, you might recall from when we studied the civil rights movement and Martin Luther King Jr., that uh, Martin Luther King Jr. and John F. Kennedy frequently discussed things as uh, Martin Luther King was trying to uh, get changes to happen in our country. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Kennedy was uh, murdered. He was also assassinated in 1963, you might recall. If you turn to the next two pages, page 60 and 61. Uh, and so on page 60, you can see it's got uh, a heading up at the very top. It says how a law is made. And we learned about that uh, earlier this year. You might recall watching a video, I'm just a bill. Yes, I'm only a bill. And so let's take a look at the picture on page 61 before I read this text. So here on page 61, you might notice there are a whole bunch of people in this picture. And not only are there a whole lot of people, but they're uh, sitting on chairs, many of them. Um, some of them are sitting at desks, it appears. Um, but these are different looking chairs and desks than what we were seeing in the pictures of the Pennsylvania State House. And if you look more carefully at these people, uh, like let's look at these folks sitting up here and this, this person right here, they're not wearing the interesting hair and clothing uh, that we've seen on our uh, Constitution's framers. So, um, in fact, that these pants are going down to these people's ankles would make us think that this is a later time in history. And as you look around at some of these other things, if you look at the, the desks themselves, um, first of all, the desks seem to have things on them like this looks like a computer monitor to me, maybe a laptop computer. Uh, same right here, this looks like a, a monitor here. And then if you look at these desks, it, it's like they're on a staircase that you can see the different layers here, different levels. And these people are sitting and they appear to be focused on this, these folks over here. Same thing, these people here seem to be focused on this up here, this rectangular area. And so um, this is, uh, I guess, what we can see from this picture, all right? So let's take a look and, and let's read this short section. How a law is made. 
The way Congress passes a law is spelled out in the Constitution. A law begins with a proposal or a bill. Either House of Congress can introduce it. If the House introduces the bill, then its members study it. Usually, they add changes. After voting for it, they send it to the Senate. Senators study the bill. They make changes, too. After voting for it, they send it to the president. If the president signs the bill, it's a law. Or the president vetoes the bill. He refuses to sign it. He sends it back to Congress. Congress can still pass the bill, but now it's harder. They need to gather many more votes, but if they succeed, the president can't veto it again. On pages 62 and 63, oh, thankfully, we have a, a caption here, and it says King George III. So this person right here is King George III with all of his fancy clothing and interesting hair. And that's the King of Great Britain. You might recall King George III is a name that we've heard a bunch um, in this unit on early American history. He was the King of England that uh, made most of the decisions that upset Americans so much that they decided to rebel and they started a war and eventually our, we became our own country, uh, the United States of America. Uh, one thing about King George III you might not know is that he was King of England for a long time. He was King for about 60 years. And when people, uh, when historians look back at the history of Great Britain, uh, believe it or not, King George III is considered one of Great Britain's greatest kings for a lot of the great things that he did for the British people. Over here on page 63, we have a different um, situation, I guess. We have a number of people who are in this scene. It looks like we've got one, two, three, four people. Um, they all also have the interesting hair and these collars. This uh, uh, Look at this jacket here with the frilly uh, 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 shirt underneath. And they're all standing around. It looks like a table with some books and perhaps a big piece of paper on it. And something else going on is that these two folks are facing each other, and this person is faced, and they look very happy. His mouth is a little open. This guy's mouth is open. So these two appear that they're talking. And this one, um, this guy, he's got his hand extended with his finger pointing at this guy. And so um, I would imagine that they're talking in kind of a heated way. Maybe there's an argument going on between these two. On the next two pages, pages 64 and 65, if you look over at this picture on 64, there is no caption. If you look at these a little more carefully, though, there's something kind of curious about them. Uh, you can see there's kind of rows of text here. And at the top of each of these rectangular pages, um, our names it says the City Gazette, the Massachusetts Gazette, Dunlap's Pennsylvania Packet, and I, I know that these are early American newspapers. I, I believe Dunlap's Pennsylvania Packet was the earliest newspaper, first newspaper in the United States, and so that's kind of interesting. And now let's take a look at the images over on page 65. And so here we see that there's a couple of people, and this person is standing, uh, it looks like standing, and got kind of a serious face. He's wearing a jacket and a tie, so not an old-timey, not a person from the time of our founding fathers, apparently. And then this person that, so this person is facing this person, and... This person here appears to be wearing, it looks like a judge's robe because you can see the big puffy pleated sleeves. And so that looks like what a judge wears. So it looks like this person is facing a judge. And then over here, you might also notice this thing right here. Um, this looks like a lectern. It looks like the thing that you have in front of you if you're giving a speech. And in fact, it looks like it's got some microphones on the top of it. So this looks like it's some sort of official sort of uh, ceremony or something. Over on pages 66 and 67, you can see there's a heading up at the top that says the Electoral College. 
And all right, so we'll take a look at that text in just a moment. Over on 67, we have illustrations of a couple of people. They're standing facing the same direction, and they both appear to wear, be wearing modern clothing and hairstyles. Uh, something else that you might notice is that this person not only wearing a dark jacket, but this looks like a necktie. And then this person is holding what appears to be a microphone in his left hand. And then if we look over at this person over here, um, this person with the light jacket, uh, this person's mouth is open. And so it appears that this person is talking, uh, gesturing with their hands, trying to make a point of some kind, I suppose. So since this, again, this text on this page, you can see it's that different font. So we're going to read it because it doesn't quite line up with the other text in this section. Find out what's going on here. Today, citizens of each state elect their senators, U.S. representatives, governors, and many other officials by direct popular vote. The candidate who gets the most votes wins the election. But to elect a president, there is a very complicated system. Even though citizens cast a ballot for the candidate of their choice, they're voting indirectly for the president. Each state has a certain number of electors chosen by the political parties of that state, and their vote for president is what counts. So these electors voting is what counts. This complicated system can result in a president taking office whom the majority of Americans did not vote for. So remember, majority a majority of a group is when you're talking about most of the group, more than half of the group. So the majority of Americans did not vote for. So sorry, this complicated system can result in a president taking office whom the majority of Americans did not vote for. Recently, this was the case both in 2000 when Al Gore lost the presidency to George W. Bush, and then again in 2016, when Donald Trump was elected president instead of Hillary Clinton. Oh, okay, so that makes sense. So apparently this is Hillary Clinton, and this is Donald Trump. All right, on pages 68 and 69, uh, there's no captions on the illustration on page 68, so let's plug in our brain and see if we can figure out what's going on here. And so we can see there are four people. Uh, two of them are sitting and two of them are standing. And they appear to have uh, modern hairstyles and clothing. This guy's wearing a jacket with a tie and this person wearing some kind of a, a jacket. And the thing that maybe stands out is that it looks like uh, this person right here is um, is talking with these two and there's a whole bunch of papers and uh, books and things that are on these tables so don't know, quite know what they're talking about maybe it's the the papers that this person is holding and as i said so it looks like uh, these two folks are talking to this person so they're having a conversation of some sort all right, let's jump over to the next page. And you can see over here, we have a portrait of, it says Andrew Johnson. So in case you didn't know, Andrew Johnson was the 17th president of the United States. And he became president after Lincoln was assassinated in 1865. So Johnson was Lincoln's vice president. And when Lincoln died, then Johnson became president of the United States. Uh, next to him, it says uh, Bill Clinton. And in case you didn't know, Bill Clinton was the 42nd president of the United States. And he was our president from 1993 to 2001. And on to the next pages. Last two pages of this chapter. On page 70, uh, once again, there is no caption. So we'll just try to figure out what's going on here. And it looks like we've got some sort of a diagram. So it's not really a picture of people talking or anything. It looks like it's just some information. And it says U.S. Supreme Court, U.S. Court of Appeals, U.S. District Courts, State Supreme Courts, Intermediate Appellate Courts, State Trial Courts. And then you might notice also that all of these, you know, it's kind of a rectangle. Or, I'm sorry, a triangular shape. And there are these arrows. And so the arrows point up, point up, and the arrows eventually all point to the U.S. Supreme Court at the top. And if you look over on page 71, well, there is the Supreme Court 
as of 2017. So this book that we're reading was published in 2018, if you recall. So uh, this is the most recent Supreme Court. And uh, you might notice that we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine justices, and they're wearing their judges' robes. And this is something that looks like it's an illustration of a picture. Often the nine justices uh, sit uh, and get their picture taken as a group.